there's some real opportunities, I think, for, for the agency here. Um, and so we're not looking for any board action tonight, but we did want to brief you on the, the progress we've made so far and how things are looking. But I'll just turn it over to Wayne for kind of the details on it. Thank you, thanks, Dan. Um, earlier this year, the board approved a contract with the uh, um, within the proposition one to determine whether there were uh, uh, potential funding for some of our capital projects that we have uh, outlined in the plan. It appears that the step phase two would qualify for the uh, state revolving fund loan uh, that could potentially provide that funding for that project. Uh, the, uh, the loan rate is uh, very attractive. It's one point seven percent. Um, as, as we know, the SNP Phase 2 is the last major project uh, that we have to complete uh, uh, the, the, the distribution system that was envisioned several years ago. We know it's an approved project and uh, we have an attractive uh, interest rate. But uh, we do know that the, the, the board should ask these questions as uh, the finance uh, committee did. Is first off, uh, can we afford it? Second, how will it affect our water rates uh, as we move into the future? How does this priority uh, compare for, uh, uh, versus other priorities that we may have? Uh, how does this project fit into the agency's strategic objectives? Um, over the next few uh, committee meetings and board meetings, uh, staff proposes to answer these questions and many other questions uh, before we ask for final approval for the project. At this time, we really wanted to inform the board about this opportunity and uh, uh, inform the board that we're looking into it and pursuing it further and we'll have more information as, uh, as uh, we progress and go through those and answer those many questions so we can have, provide a real clear, concise uh, set of pros and cons of the project and how best to find it. Any questions? Uh, what it means is that the, the money that is uh, uh, loaned out is repaid over a 20-year period, and that money is then uh, loaned out again to another project. And so there's a revolving fund that's loaned out on a continuous basis. And as the payments come back in, more loans are repaid at the same time. One thing to point out, too, that you know when we have RAP tell us, look at our financial situation and our base structure and have a five-year plan, the SNP phase two was plugged in there. You know, it's, there's definitely needs some more refinement and so forth, but it's been something that the board has envisioned for some time and we've kind of factored that in. But uh, again, we'll probably be refining that as we go forward to get better. Yeah. And also, comment we're getting to the official application yet to have to design the uh, environment. But there is, right now, we want to move forward. It's just a one page application that gets us assigned to an engineer from the state. So we did want to move forward on that so that this part of the project can be contact you know, so it can, so it doesn't commit you to anything, it just gets you in the, in the mix. One thing about this is that the interest rate is amazing. It's 1.6% payback. Uh, and the project Said yes, you don't believe it's going to be an issue of the scope of project to get, to get the money. Right, and they did not purchase all this because it's 22 million. That's what we indicated for the end of the project. And it's, it's shovel, but essentially shovel ready because we've got preliminary design and we've envisioned this for quite some time. So it's it's not like it's. Uh, so for the audience and for the record, <coughs> can you please just touch base? What is the benefit of you know, finishing this you know, small? Uh, well, we could probably all jump in on this, but this is this is essentially eight miles of pipeline that would um, bring that would complete the the SNP system, and it would give us the opportunity to take water from our well field, well actually well field or Roseman even, and bring water up to here, which means that you can deliver water pretty much to our whole system. So it kind of links the whole system. Um, we're going to go into some of the issues we've had on this outage, uh, having that extra connection would be a huge benefit in that sort of situation, an emergency outage and so forth. So it, it gives us the flexibility 
to basically deliver groundwater uh, or surface water to pretty much your whole system. So it's, I don't know, did I mischaracterize it? Or? We can also go the other way to Quartz Hill to all the way out to the Yeah, floor. that's true. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Okay, so um, that's it. <coughs> And we would, uh, we would anticipate to have the, uh, some of the analysis all done in the next uh, month or so. Uh, and that committee and the board uh, well positioned to understand the financial and all the things we talked about, um, the strategic uh, aspects of that, uh, so that you, you'll have those decisions or have that information so you can make that decision. <coughs> also, Ben, didn't you say that? Because of this type of project and because of the proposition, ABEC has a very good chance it fits within the scope of the outlines what the state proposition is. Yeah, because SRF has been around, state has been involved in the years. I think kind of influx of the top one of to make a few bigger projects to have the projects that are just long before they really focus a lot on the grant. Um, water supply initial allocation should be out December 1st. Um, Oroville is at 48% of historical average and San Luis is at 34. This is a picture of um, the pool just upstream, pool 49, where we have the outage. I've got some other pictures later, but it kind of shows. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of debris and mud. Um, this is the Sierra precipitation. You know, just getting the water year started. So the blue line down at the bottom is uh, where we are right now. So far, you know, you don't get a whole lot of water before uh, the first of the year, but uh, we're at 43%. Um, these are the reservoir conditions. Uh, not a lot of change. Um, some of these are really, really, I mean, you can see exchequer is down to 7%. New Malonis is down to 12%. So we've got a, a long way. Uh, this is Oroville. Um, not much change from last board meeting. In fact, we're about where we were last year at this time, um, which isn't surprising. Again, Oroville in a dry cycle really doesn't help you out. It just kind of maintains the delta of water quality and supplies water for downstream water reservoirs. And the smell. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is San Luis. Uh, the state project side is a little better shape than we were last year, um, but it's uh, a lot of it is carryover. The contractors have been really careful to maintain, so that if we go into another dry cycle, we'll have um, some water in San Luis with their name on it. Payback is in that category. We've got some water that we've retained in San Luis for uh, a dry year. Uh, this is the, the forecast for Oroville, uh, just kind of an informational item. Um, see a little bit, of, little bit of rain, just a smattering of rain uh, the last 10 days and a little bit of forecast. There is supposed to be a storm coming through midweek this week. Um, not a drought bust or anything, but it's uh, going to be a little wet. And you'll notice that the, uh, it's getting a lot cooler. The, the upper part of this chart shows the snow level, and you can see that it's up in the 12, 11,000 
acre per her 11 foot level, and it's getting quite a bit cooler. So um, the forecast is for a little bit of rain, and it's going to get cooler. Um, this is. Um, yeah. Actually, the green that shows above uh, above normal uh, actually has moved up a little bit, so it's you know it's getting a little better. Um, they're describing this El Nino because you know years start out with El Nino. They say now that this is too big to fail. So, um, but again, it's, yeah. we'll see how it develops. Uh, now we'll get into operations, which is pretty interesting uh, right now as. We mentioned Fort Sill is off. Uh, we're just running it kind of intermittently. Um, I think we're running it a, a day this week, a day next week, two days this week. Uh, but it's it's just kind of intermittent to kind of keep things freshened up and to um, meet some just uh, some minor demands. The Roseman is not affected so we're, we're still taking water out through the uh, west feeder and Roseman's at 4 uh, MGD east side, uh, it's downstream of all this problem, so we're still delivering water out of east side at uh, one and a half, and uh, we're doing a little bit with Palmdale Connection, but then the, the water bank extractions, just today, we've been asked by the Department of Water Resources to shut down our east side pump in and um, the 96th Street pump in, because the pool is full. I mean, you basically back water up into the pool, and it's within like 18 inches of the top of the line or something. <coughs> Fill the pool up. And so, 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 what you're saying is, you're not taking water downstream. Um, because it means, right. I mean, basically, that, yeah. the, right. So that means the reservoir is down. And you know, we want to keep it. One thing is that it, it stair steps down as you go further down the valley. And uh, so, it's kind of a good thing for it to stack up in our in our reach so that we have that available to us. And if there isn't a demand south, <coughs> they can live off of work or off of. It's not a bad thing to have a water stack that. It's just interesting that you know, we've kind of come to this position. Um, west side, we're still doing 10 MGD. Um, and I'll get into some of the other, because I'm sure you're going to have some questions for John after you see these pictures. Howard, can you go back to that, please? Sure. OK, so I want to bring this up to the board. So off, 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 almost pretty much off. What's happening here is, is that our customers are not using any valve. That's, that's basically what's happening here. They're using their own wells, uh, except West Side. Those are our wells because District 40 has two or three contaminated wells that have high arsenic. So the money we've spent, all these millions of dollars, we're supplying them out of our wells because they won't drill their own wells because it would be a fraction. So, this is things that we need to be brought up. You know, we're spending all this money, but they're not reciprocating by buying AVAX water. So, this one's in there. Well, it's for itself, it's off because of the problem with the aqueduct. Yeah, but see, but, it's, but the west side there, uh -huh. where they get the water in the pressure zone off of the, um, the, the, the uh, Avenue H line, that's where the water's going to feed on Lancaster. But before we shut the thing down, they were they were still not taking water. How much water were they taking from here? From the Quartzville plant? Yeah. About eight MGD. Yeah. That's 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 all the customers. Um, oh, no, but how much is District 40 taking? Uh, I would say they were taking about 75% of that. They were probably taking about six million out of the Quartzville plant from the plant. So 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 they're not I mean they're not taking much water. See 96 Street right there? That's 100%, only services, 100% LA County, 100%. No other client customer gets that wall, okay? The, um, the, the Palmdale connection is 100% district court as services the Acton area. So they just tell us to turn them off, 
so why they can pump the wells. Because they don't want to pay the highest higher rate. And these are things we need to cons consider because we're going to be a standby for them. When water is available, we can't sell it to them at the lowest possible rate. Is there a pocket of water for we ourselves? Have to have a mm -hmm. yeah, right. that, that we need to have a strategy. Exactly. Especially if I know how that word keeps coming up. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yeah. Is the um, Port Sale plant. So here's the Port Sale plant. Um, this is check 49. So these are gates that they can close to, to isolate this reach. The slide came in right here. I'll show you some pictures. So basically, this is the reach. They close these gates, and they've got some gates about five and a half miles up this way. They close those gates. They pump, they're pumping this out. Well, they actually, it looks like they've actually finished pumping this reach out, and they've been digging the mud out of this spot right here. Um, this is a uh, Yeah, that's a you know, that's a state water project. And so basically, it goes down here delivers water to us, Palmdale, Little Rock, Mojave, and then goes to this and our slime division. So this is a question for the slide. Fire that was there a few years ago contributed to that slide or was it just the enormous amount of rain? It was a it was a lot of rain. Um, I mean they were talking like four inches in an hour. Um, but I'm sure that the, the fire probably didn't help, but it was it was a whole lot of rain. And this is this is a shot um, facing south, um, so that's the, the north side over there, um, up against the hills. So you can see that the mud just flowed right over the top of the canal, filled the canal up basically um, with mud. So this is this is the liner on the on the south side, and then so you can see this this is mud and it filled up to probably within four or five feet of this side. What side of the line? Um, the north side, or excuse me, the south side. Side you're looking at. In fact, I've got a picture of that uh, too. Uh, this is another view. Uh, I think it's first, first or second day before they started excavating. So basically, the mud filled the thing up. Um, this is when they started excavating. So they started pumping the water out and uh, draining it and digging the mud out. And so you can see there's some cracks over here on the south liner, right there. That's, that's the damage that was done. These are uh, unreinforced concrete panels. So they're, they're just uh, there to keep it. Doesn't the excavator have to be cautious because when you start, that dirt starts moving, there's nothing, no force to keep that concrete to that side. Yeah, it's, it's a sensitive operation. You, you, they can only draw the water levels down at a certain rate because if you draw it down too fast, then you have other problems. You have right. and so forth. So yeah, it's a, it's kind of a touchy, um, kind of a touchy operation. Um, not to this extent. Um, there are reaches that have had mud come in and popped panels like this down the Royal Pass Hair along I-5, um, but nothing nothing this drastic. Or bad. They're also worried about buffering, aren't they? Yeah, I mean that's. Um, and in fact, you know, I think directors even wonder too when they start giving us the first estimates, you know, like two weeks to get it repaired back up. And, um, and I, I hope that works out, and it's pretty optimistic. But that's still where they're at. We have an operations meeting with them tomorrow, and they're going to update us. But they, they do have the mud out and the water out, so they can take a good look at it. So that's, they're still talking about uh, November 11th, have it back in operation. And the, I mean, this is an emergency outage. This is, why you have groundwater banks and so forth is um, dry your supply, emergency outage, and this, this is an emergency outage. It's, um, you know, when you have all your water cut off essentially and you have to live off your the one we have in your groundwater basin. It's, it's a real testament, I think, to our operations staff to make all this stuff happen, but they're right on it. So, um, this is the spoil. They're taking the mud and dumping it on the north side of the canal. So they just uh, This shows the cracking a little better. Um, there. See this? There's see this crack right here. That kind of thing is what. And you see each one of these panels. They'll probably pull these out and then uh, replace them. So they're actual pre-established panels. Uh, no, they're cast in place. They're cast in place. Yeah. Okay. As far as I know, I mean, that's what I've seen. 
Do they wear a mesh or something? No, I don't think there's any 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 wire any rebar anything in there. Which is kind of interesting. You think you'd have just practical? I don't think there's anything in there. There's kind of a lot of studies on that. That's why they're really sensitive about how fast these get drawn down and so forth because they're just they're just concrete panels sitting there. Yeah, the water and there's it's kind of equalized. Yeah. This pump station uh, we pumped up here to Lake Elizabeth. So this is in reach 48, right? Um, this is the little pump station you have up there. That all kinds of debris, mud, um, just fill this whole thing up. <laughs> so that's kind of what we, and um, again, operations got, somebody out there got this cleaned up and this back operational, I think it was Thursday last week. So, yeah, so we got water back up to Lake Elizabeth pretty quickly. And they, they had similar damage to their little treatment plant, and they were able to get that cleaned up and back in operation. So we got water back to the lake. Um, that's it for the uh, John, do you have any, do you have any questions for John? How about Cal Water? Cal Water, um, right now, I think they're still, they're still hauling some water. The they're trucking water. Um, we've asked that they like take a little bit of water because the plant's on right now, and they've declined. I know I see trucks going up and down the yeah, road. Yeah, what they're telling us is that those trucks are hard to find, and they want to hold on to them. And since we can't guarantee when we come back on, we don't really know, um, they want to hold on to them so they can continue the truck. Um, That's actually 49. That's the reach that was being drawn down. But um, so we're running the quartz sale plant as needed. Um, John's really having to kind of be careful because you don't want to pull a lot of nasty stuff into the into the plant because then you uh, have trouble getting it started again. Um, if they get it back online on the 11th, they'll run high velocities to try to flush this out, send it all down to Silverwood. <laughs> <laughs> So we will probably wait to where things get cleaned up a little bit before we actually start pumping into the plant again. Um, cool 48 is okay, that's the low station and the west feeder upstream of this, um, this slide. Um, State Water Project, uh, again, aqueduct outage um, is kind of the big news. Um, we do have an operations workshop on the second and third up in Sacramento, and this is kind of the annual workshop where they talk about the operations for the year. Um, and so I'll be attending that. Um, they, they have the comment period for the Delta EIR, EIS is just about finished. Um, just to remind you, this has been nine years in, in the making. Um, it's uh, $240 million. They've come up with a draft EIR that has 18 alternatives. And um, they came out with the draft, and this is comment period for the recirculated uh, EIR. So um, they uh, expect to get a lot of comments on the draft. This is the Twin Tunnels EIR. Draft EIR. Um, just another note, um, Flora King Moon, who was the Chief Deputy Director, I, I've known her for 20 years, I think. Mike's probably known her for 20 years. She worked for the contractor. She passed away this morning of uh, cancer. She was actually working for the Department of Water Resources as Chief. Just my schedule for next week. Um, we have adjudication, oral arguments are on the fourth, yeah, fourth of next week, and I have a couple of state water contact this workshop next week, and then uh, a couple of meetings at the state uh, state water contractors' offices. So I will probably be out most of the time. That concludes my report. Uh, Palmdale, the state of California. Um, 
health services. I, I call them health services, not health services anymore. State board. Yeah, it's a state state board now. Um, it was all very well. I think it's been a lot of cooperation. But yeah, the, the Palmdale has helped us actually give water to the waterworks. Um, so there's been some exchanges happening. It's, it's really good. Really and Director Dino from Palmdale Water has been served tonight with this time. Thank you and the board for the cooperation and the help. And uh, hopefully we can do the same someday. Oh, well, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome with cooperation. Thank you. Also, uh, Roseman has a, um, you know, they, they really helped us out on that. The one picture I showed that we had mud filling up a lot of our vaults and so forth. They have a, a vacuum truck. 